Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video, so let's thank our members first over landing 11B, thank you for being the full crew member, thank you all the Foxbat member, Igor, Yuyush, Justin Field, Diaf, Chalares, Astropub and Silami, and thank you all the Fishbat members, it helps a lot, make sure to subscribe, join our discord and let's get into it. So, we have a very special video here today which is the video about the Su-25. Uh, I was actually planning to do later this week, but since we don't have a dev server probably or anything like that, we are going recording this on Friday, so I guess we don't have it. And we don't have a confirmation that the Su-25 is actually coming to War Thunder, but I like to think that it is, and I did the research, and we're going to talk about a little bit here today on the Diving Down series again. Uh, it's the... Uh, we had the F-15, the Su-27, MiG-25, MiG-29, uh, Tornado, F-16, all sorts of aircraft, and I'm planning to do more, uh, but I'm going to do the probably the, the, the upcoming ones I will do depending on what we gain uh, access on the dev server and stuff like that, or the dev stream and stuff like that, so depending on the aircraft that they show, I will do a video on that if I have already not did it, you know? Jesus, English, okay. So, yeah, but the Su-25, uh, it's commonly known as the Grash, uh, or the Hook, uh, Rook, I think it's called, uh, which is that bird uh, in Russian, you know. And that's why we kind of know it's probably coming, because of the decal that I already told you uh, on a video, I think it was uh, on Wednesday this week. So, yeah, it is a subsonic single-seat two engines. Uh, developed by Sukhoi, uh, designed forecast aircraft, you know. Uh, it is designed by the Sukhoi Bureau, not the Sukhoi company, obviously, because it was designed in the 70s. Uh, so, yeah, designed forecast. First fly was in 1975. Production started, the official service production started in 1978, with the service life around that area as well, 1979, something like that, in Tbilisi, which is in Georgia right now, uh, in the Soviet, uh, it was in the um, Soviet Republic of Georgia, you know, back in the day. Uh, several combat arenas, it was used, you know, uh, Afghan war, Iran-Iraq war, Abkhazian war, and many, 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 many wars, there's so many wars, and so many users, I'm going to list them all, but there's so many users for this aircraft. And even a war happening right now, so it is a very capable aircraft, very cool aircraft, it is very, very uh, good at, at, at its job, you know, similarly to the A-10 in certain uh, aspects, you know, of the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, but obviously it is a lot different, as I said in the other video. Uh, so yeah, in 1968, the history behind it is that in 1968 the Soviet Ministry of Defense decided to make a more of a Sturmovik successor, you know, a Sturmovik style aircraft, an armored assault aircraft uh, for combat air, um, air support, you know, so CAS, with the experience of another Soviet aircraft being too quick or too lightly armored for properly do CAS, you know. Uh, so they started with this idea being more heavily armored, uh, a more slow, air, uh, slow the aircraft, you know, uh, Pavel Sukhoi himself, uh, with a lot of specialists and engineers of the Sukhoi Bureau, designed the aircraft. And after a competition in 1969 with other aircraft like the IL-102, and for the love of God, Gaijin, do not put this aircraft, it's like so, so cursed. Jesus, I really wish we had... I mean, I can feel that they will probably have like a, a normal Tech 3 variant and then they will put the IL-102 on the on the premium line, but <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, so yeah, and some prototypes um, after the IL-102 uh, uh, and some prototypes and its first flight in 1975, it won the program. So yeah, and this serious production was announced for the Su-25. Uh, with more uh, prototypes to get a little bit more stuff going on and an agreement was made to start the production in 1978 in Tbilisi, as I said before, in the Soviet Republic of Georgia, a place where the MiG-21 UB was being built. So yeah, very uh, developed part of the, the um, 
Soviet industry was there, so yeah. With many variants appearing during the 1980s and 90s until this day, it's being operated by many, many nations with many, many upgrades. And the nations that um, are using it right now is, there are so many of them, Angola, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Chad, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Ethiopia, Georgia, Gambia, Iran, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Mali, Niger, North Korea, Peru, Russian, the Russian Air Force, Sudan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, and with some former operators being the Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, obviously become the Czech Republic later, Ivory Coast, North Macedonia, Slovakia, and of course the Soviet Union. China bought even one from Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken, for evaluation, but it was not in service with the Chinese Air Force. So please don't ask for the Chinese Su-25, it was just a trainer, okay, that they bought, just, just one. So please, no Chinese Su-25, come on. <laughs> That would make no sense. But yeah, the airframe is 60% aluminum with 19% uh, of steel and 13.5% of titanium. Used a lot of titanium to cover a lot of things uh, and be strong on the objective of being a flying tank, basically. <laughs> uh, the wings are swept a bit and the air brakes are on the wingtip, as you see in the picture. It was... Um, it has a 10 wing, wing mounted hardpoints for many types of payloads and uh, uh, fuel tanks and stuff like that. It has slats, flaps, and initially had, I mean, until this day, the basic version still has this engine, but yeah, the normal version of the engine was the R94, R95SH, I think, or I don't know if it's called Sturmovik, but normally in Russian, the SH after something that it's on an aircraft is Sturmovik for some reason. So, which means like stormtrooper in, in Russian, which is, no, I think it's that storm, is it? I don't know. Well, uh, the <laughs> engines, uh, the R95's engines, which are basically non-afterburner versions of the well-known R13 engine, the engine used on the MiG-21 uh, MiG and many, many other aircraft. And yeah, it was producing uh, in the normal operation 44 kilonewtons of thrust, so it is pretty all right. Uh, having 88 kilonewtons of thrust, it probably has more when it's in optimal conditions, but yeah. And some of the variants use the R195, which is a more advanced version of the same engine, producing 12% more thrust, about 50 kilonewtons. Uh, and it has a lot of armor on the engine bay, so yeah, it protects it with the titanium that it has. So pretty cool. It has reinforced steel uh, in the headrest for uh, a for about six millimeters and a bathtub for the pilot uh, which is made from welded titanium sheets making it a very very durable and very very good there's some pictures of this thing just taking up missiles like it's nothing you know <laughs> not nothing because the aircraft is destroyed by but the guy just keeps flying it and go back to the airbase and it's just funny that how durable these aircraft are and these engines also pretty pretty amazing. Uh, initially it had only a laser rangefinder slash designator for targets and on the nose tip having a dropper radar for navigation so kind of INS but with radar still uh, and it's able to fly IMC conditions and which is uh, instrument meteorological conditions so clouds and stuff uh, having 250 flares and chaff uh, dispensers, you know, and it uses the SPO-15 radar warning receiver, the Videosa, which is the same uh, RWR as the MiG-23, MiG-27, and all the advanced aircraft, Su-17, I think he uses uh, on War Thunder, you know, MiG-29, Su-27, it's a very well-known RWR, uh, initially, at least. But it was upgraded, as I was saying, uh, along the years, you know, we'll talk about it, the variants, um, up later on the variant variance part of the video you know uh, but yeah the max speed would be around 975 kilometers per hour about max 0.79 with a range about a thousand kilometers and with the service ceiling of 7,000 meters so it is a very low flying aircraft and the objective it is to be flown and at low altitude altitudes which makes it I mean it makes you think about how they flew these aircraft in Afghanistan because 
those altitudes are not a joke for these aircraft and I mean 7,000 of a service ceiling <laughs> I mean yeah it's not that good and especially in those situations but it is a CAS aircraft so it doesn't have to do anything beyond that it has 58 meters per second of climb rate so with these stats you will see that it's not going to be top tier at least not the first variant you know uh, it is going to be Basically, it's going to be like a 10.0, 9.7 kind of thing, you know, so yeah, it's not that much. Uh, so yeah, uh, the main gun is the Grijaed Shipunov GSH-30-2 cannon, which is the same gun as the MI-24P behind. Uh, it has 250 rounds with a very, very fast, fast firing rate, so yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the normal, I mean, payloads that it could use, uh, it's... 23 millimeter gun pod so we can do stuff like the a7 does or the even the premium weight 10 they can take gun pods so it's nice it's the same gun pod as the yak 38 which is the same gun as the mig 20 uh, 21 for example and the 23 uh, it can take the s5s s8s s13s s24s and s25 rockets even though with the s24s they actually had problems with reliability with this missile and they just decided to not use it anymore for I don't know when it was that, but it, they had some problems with that. The missile not uh, working properly and exploding certain situations. I don't know exactly the what happened there, but yeah. So yeah. And the R60Ms would be the main missile. Obviously entered service after the R60M was already in service. So the main armament as an air-to-air -air weapon would be the R60M. Uh, but later models received the R73 as well. Uh, for precision guidance, uh, the basic model would need the KH uh, would have the KH-25 ML, which is a laser guided uh, missile that we already have, uh, KH-29 L, and yeah, the normal bombs that you normally see: the Fab 500M62, the Zap 500, the Fab 250, Fab 100, the BTEB 500, which is uh, an anti-concrete bomb, uh, which is to destroy uh, airfields, you know. Any more advanced variants, you can carry the Vikir missile, which is an amazing missile that we see in the KA-52. Uh, it can have the KH-31, I think, in some variants, and or the KH-25MP, uh, so some seed weapons, the KH-29T, Cav-500, and many, many, many other uh, stuff. So, yeah, it's a, a dedicated cast anti-tank kind of thing, you know, uh, very dedicated to that, so it is slow, it doesn't go fast. And basically it is the counter, kind of the counter, not the counter because they are not made for to be counter to each other, but it's the same idea behind an A-10 kind of, but with different ideas behind it as well. So they have, it, it is definitely unique and different, you know, so yeah. So yeah, and for the variants, we have many, many, many variants. So yeah, these are the basic stuff around the aircraft. So it's a very, very cool aircraft to be honest. If we only get that, I will be kind of sad because I really wanted the MiG-25 or 29 or something like that. Uh, but in the Russians, but yeah, the Su-25 is also an aircraft that we should receive, and the Su-24 uh, should be received as well. So yeah. Uh, so the variants. So we have the Su-25 without a designation. Uh, sometimes it's called the Su-25A, but it's it's just Su-25. You know, it's the basic version that I just talked about it with the R95 engine, laser designation, uh, radar navigation, stuff like that, laser guided stuff in general, uh, 582 built, uh, it is basically the backbone of the Russian Air Force right now for CAS, and it was the backbone of the Soviet CAS fleet as well. Uh, the Su-25K, it is basically the same aircraft as we already talked about it, but for export, obviously, normally called the commer commercial Komerski, I think it's called, uh, around 180 built with minor details in internal equipment, obviously stuff like that being an export variant. I think this should be the premium aircraft, but yeah, with less amount of uh, advanced weapons maybe. So yeah, then we have the Su-25 UB. It's a two-seat trainer version with 25 built uh, for training and combat training as well. Uh, the Su-25 UBK, a two-seat trainer version for export, with the same specifics as the Su-25K. Uh, then, in 
2008, uh, they did the Su-25 UB UBM, which is a two-seater trainer, but that can actually be used as an attacker as well, or reconnaissance and stuff like that. It has infrared counter systems, uh, countermeasure systems like the IR, I think IRCM, what's it called? The, the system on the uh, helicopters that we have already in game, so pretty cool. Uh, the Su-25 UTG was a carrier-capable version of the Su-25 UB and it is in service right now for training and combat and stuff like that so all they use are for two-seater versions so the UB, UBK, UBM, UTG are all two-seaters uh, then we have the Su-25BM which is a target towing aircraft so it's used for towing some targets for being shot at you know <laughs> uh, for training um, so yeah, it uses the R195 engine as I said, and it has better enough systems the, than the original one. So yeah, pretty cool. And then we get to the actual interesting version. So first of all we have the Su-25T, which is the dedicated anti-tank version of the basic Su-25. Um, so yeah, it, it was combat tested in Chechnya, uh, having a notable success, so it was very very effective, uh, with only 8 uh, in service, you know, a very small number, but still very effective. And the design was similar to the Su-25 UB, but converted to one seat, so the rear seat was replaced by avionics and stuff. It is all-weather and night attack capa uh, cap capable, you know. So, yeah, it uses the KH-29T, the Cub 500, seed systems, uh, the Vikir missiles, uh, 16 Vikir missiles it can carry, plus two KH-29Ts plus like 4 KH-29L, uh, uh, KH-25s MLs and more 2 R-73s if they want to. So yeah, very effective at that. Uh, it has the uh, Shkval, I think it's called, uh, optical TV system, uh, which has a laser rangefinder and laser designator also and with the mercury pod it can also use uh, be used as a night ops or low light ops in general uh, with thermal so it has thermal imaging uh, so yeah pretty interesting three prot prototype builds uh, built in the 80s and eight service aircraft in 1990 uh, with the Strov Strojevoi Moderno Moderni Modernizirovani I translated the, the language here, I don't know why, in Cyrillic it would be easier to read than this. But yeah, the program with the... Um, so this SM program that I already told you about, the Strojevoi Modernizirovny uh, program, which is the SM program, uh, basically made the T variant be cancelled, but there are eight of them in service, I think, until this day. And they are very, very effective, just old technology, but it is very, very effective. Uh, so this version can be added, and it is the main version that we have in DCS, for example. It is very heavy when you use the 16 Vickers, but uh, if you plan yourself and stuff like that, I think it, it's problematic in an air-to-air -air combat, but it is very, very good at anti-tank. I mean, 16 Vickers missiles, man, that can be used as uh, air-to-air, mission as well if you want really want to because it has proximity fuel so yeah but yeah the Su-25 TM which is the improved version of the Su-25 sometimes called the Su-39 it is an improved uh, version of the Su-25T with improved the nav and attack systems better survivability still having the Shkval uh, system but it has the ability to carry the co uh, Copio radar which is able to use the R-27 missiles and R-77s, as well as anti-ship missiles like the KH-31 and 35. Uh, they were 8 built and delivered in, in 2008, uh, and the systems from the T and TM programs were used in the SM program, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. It's an aircraft that was very interesting and very capable, to be honest. Uh, I think it's an aircraft that have even at certain point it was uh, designed to you to be able to land on a carrier but it is hard to find information about it uh, but yeah it is an aircraft that it, it would be very very cool to see in game probably one of the most advanced versions in general uh, but the main version that I want to talk about it is the Sukhoi 25 SM which this one I really need it in game man for my personal use because it's just an amazing aircraft 
it is basically an upgrade for the already existing, even though some of them were uh, built from scratch, but uh, it is basically an upgrade from the already built Su-25 basic version, you know. Uh, it is supposed to be an affordable upgrade program uh, of the old basic version, as I said. It started in 2000, and the TNTM were deemed to be too expensive and complex for this, so they decided to make a more using some of the systems obviously but they used uh, they tried to make a more a cheap a cheaper version obviously because the TNTM were too expensive and too complex uh, it has improvements in avionics in service of life of the engine of the aircraft itself it has digital computers uh, and better nav systems with satellite connections and INS uh, a better HUD a, like 50% more field of view if I'm not mistaken MFD displays the GLONASS being the GPS that I to, uh, the satellite connection uh, the Pastel RWR which is a very cool like kind of mall system that we are already having some helicopters uh, the R95 engines were overhauled to be more reliable with the amount of powder and gases that the, the engine ingests from the rockets that are being deployed by the, the aircraft so it's funny that they have to think about that and even some self-test systems much like the MiG-21's uh, one that I MiG-29's one sorry that I told you about in the MiG-29 video to decrease the the maintenance time uh, for about 25 to 30 percent uh, so yeah pretty cool it is thir uh, 300 kilograms lighter than the normal Su-25 and it has the addition of the R-73 obviously uh, it has it doesn't have the HMD, the helmet mounted display, unfortunately, but it's still very, very effective just with the R-73s. The S-13T rockets, a new version of the S-13, improved systems to the laser-guided KH-25ML and KH-29L launch systems uh, that are just uh, able to, you know, how they work, you know, one shot at a time and stuff, and they're kind of limited. They basically made it so that you can actually fire two missiles in, in two different targets each time so very more uh, a little bit more effective than that uh, lower fire rate modes for the GSH-30 cannon to make sure that you save enough ammo if you want to and yeah basically in 2020 about 100 aircraft were already with this upgrade but since 2018 a new upgrade is being put in the aircraft and that's the Su-25 SM-3 so yeah it has all obviously all the improvements of the sm but it has instead of the shkval system on the no no it's not the shkval system it's the uh, well the laser guided system the laser designator system on the tip nose of the aircraft it has the salt 25 optical sensor so it has actual an actual tv system on the nose so they managed to do it without increasing too much of the weight. Obviously, we are getting to better and better technology. So even the T and the TM were just... Uh, now they're just too old anyway because the SM3 just has the same capabilities of the, the Ts and, and TMs, but even better, you know. It has a 16G zoom. So, yeah, pretty alright, to be honest. Uh, laser and target designation has thermals, very modern thermals. A TV system, as I said. It, it can track moving targets uh, at about 8 kilometers. So, that's not amazing, but it is pretty alright. And, yeah, we have ultra-modern Vitebelsk uh, 25 system, which has the Zakvat uh, forward and rear-facing ultraviolet sensor sensors to detect missiles so it is probably the most advanced one of the, the most advanced uh, radar and sensors that they have to detect missiles you know and stuff like that with the mall system of the pastel m rwr and the l uh, 370 radar jamming pod together with the flares and po flares and chaffs and stuff like that it can be very very effective and very very um, survivable to be honest with all the armor that he has the way that the aircraft works together with all these uh, defense systems and all the offensive systems it is a very very capable aircraft very interesting and it has the SM-1 bars nav target system as well together with the SVP-24 a system that I already talked about it on 
some of the videos, I think it was on the Su-27 one, that a lot of aircraft are receiving the system, which uh, it tends to try to make uh, a non-guided bomb or a rocket be as precise as a guided one. So it is a system that uses satellite and sensors and pressure on the air and temperature and a lot of things. It calculates the exact point of impact much more precisely. It's like a, a very advanced CCRP system, you know, or even CCIP. So yeah, pretty interesting. The SM3 is just the best version out there. I think uh, I really want this version, to be honest, because it has the most amount of things. I'm going to talk about the variants that should come to our Thunderbird. It is just amazing. The Su-25 SM3 is very, very good. Uh, then some other versions. We have the Su-25KM, which is a Georgian upgrade program from the Tbilisi Aircraft Company, I think it's called, uh, which have uh, an LBIT uh, program, uh, together program, you know, uh, with the Israelis. Uh, the prototypes first flew in 2001, but it's basically an upgrade program for the original Su-25s. So it has glass cockpit, uh, cockpit uh, helmet-mounted displays, digital map generators, many types of upgrades to nav and attack systems, Israeli bombs, R-73. So it is just a very interesting aircraft. To be honest, this can be even a, a premium aircraft in the far future. So yeah. Uh, then we have the Su-28, which is a Su-25UB, but without the weapons and engine armor uh, to replace the L-39 as a trainer, basic trainer and civilian even aircraft. So pretty interesting that they sell this aircraft. Uh, other minor versions are the Su-25U, which is a Georgian training that they built. Uh, the Su-25M1 and UMB-1, which are Ukrainian upgraded versions with same types of upgrades that the Russians made to them, um, so the Ukrainians also did with their own systems. So HUD, GPS, and you know more better accurate weapon systems and stuff like that. So just a more, it's difficult to find information about these Ukrainian ones, but I know that they are upgraded versions of the normal Su-25s with more accurate weapon systems, HUDs, and GPS. I think it's that, uh, maybe a little bit more. Then we have the GE-31, it's an ongoing program to make a Su-25 without the Russian tech in Georgia, which is also kind of cool, you know. So the GE-31, another, kind of another aircraft, you know. And then we come to the last part of the video, as always, the variants that should come to Orton, in my opinion. I think there are four variants that sh really should come, and another one that maybe not, maybe yes, I don't know. So I think right now in this update we don't have uh, many information if it is even coming, but I think the Su-25 basic version for the Tech 3 under the IL-28 uh, Sturmovic would be amazing. I think it's uh, the main variant, it's the basic variant, so laser guided stuff, nothing too fancy, you know, 80s, 70s, 80s technology, stuff like that. And under the IL-28 Sturmovic because it is the attacker line of the Soviet Union, I think. A lot of people will think about the MiG-27s and the Su-17s and Su-7s. But to be honest, the Su-17s, the Su-7s and the MiG-27s, they are all in the kind of a, the wrong place if you go into upwards in the, the tree, you know. So I think uh, the Su-25s would be all right under there, even though the IL-28s are bombers, frontline bombers, that should be under the, the 2-4 maybe or something like that. They are, um, that's an attacker line, so yeah, the Su-25, the, all the IL-2s are there, the IL-10s and stuff like that, the Su-6s and stuff like that, so I think the Su-25, the basic version, should be under the IL-28 Sturmovic. Then the Su-25K as a premium for some nation, they can choose, I don't know, like five different more than five different camels that they can put it on the K variant and be I don't know how many nations, it can be an Iraqi one, it can be a Syrian one, I think, it can be, I don't know if Syria used it, I told you about it before, but I don't think so, I think it was just the Russians in Syria, right? Uh, but yeah, North Korea can have some cool camels for it, uh, Iraq as I said, so yeah, I don't know. More countries, the better, you know, to have skins and stuff like that to be different. Then after the basic version, uh, we maybe see two variants, to be honest, uh, the Su-25T, which would be after this, the basic Su-25, 
but when maybe the A10C is added or something like that, or maybe when the A10 receives more weaponry, I don't know. Uh, because this would be very, very much kind of OP in air to ground battles, so in ground battles, so yeah, I don't know about that, but still, it is a very interesting tank uh, aircraft that is kind of a tank, but yeah. And after that, or in replacement of that, because the Su-25T and the Su-25TM are kind of very low production models. So, f in my opinion, I should say that we should get this Su-25 under the IO-28, then the Su-25SM with an upgrade on the future to be the SM-3. Uh, when the A10C is added, so this way you can have a more advanced variant uh, from a little bit later than the A10C, obviously, but it's still uh, not that much. The A10C is what 2005, 2007, I think. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, it's an aircraft that had many, many upgrades as well, and they can be both added in the same patch, maybe in the far future. So yeah. And then the Su-25T can be an event vehicle, or even the last aircraft that I'm going to talk about is the Su-25TM as a premium or an event vehicle, but in the far future, because I, I personally don't like the idea of having the Su-25TM, just because it kinda, it's a weird aircraft that can shoot R-77s, that would be uh, kinda weird. So it needs to be in the far, far future, or at least without these types of weapons, you know? Uh, but yeah, maybe the TM instead of the T, but without the air-to-air -air weapons and the Raider pod. So maybe that's the idea, I don't know, as a premium or an event vehicle. Or yeah, but in the line I think we should receive the Su-25 and the Su-25SM with an upgrade to be the SM-3. They're just way more produced and way better to be honest than the other ones uh, to, to fit on the category of our Tech-3 tech lineup, you know. So yeah, but basically this is it guys, I hope you enjoyed, uh, I hope you found it informative and let's see if we are right and if the Su-25 is actually coming, hopefully it is, but yeah, I see you guys on the next one, during the week I'm going to be covering a lot of the stuff coming up, so make sure to subscribe and I see you guys on the next one, so bye guys, see ya.